what was your uh, what was your overall take? Like, how did you enjoy the fight? What was the general uh, gist that you that you walked away with? Uh, well, I I was very upset, of course, because uh, I have a lot of pride, a lot of pride, and and being Irish, uh, I'm very established in Irish history. Uh, our history goes back eight eight hundred years of uh, even go back to the Celtic warriors and stuff. There's there's a lot there's a lot the Irish people can um, there's just so that's that's really the main reason why I was upset. I wasn't upset because of course Conor McGregor lost the fight but it was Irish hope it was a sense of not only hope and uh, somehow a dream for mixed martial arts of course this would be an absolute dream for mixed martial arts to capitalize on trying to defeat the best boxer in the planet but it was a big thing for the Irish people Uh, of course I'm Irish has a lot of Irish people so that translated well that's why I, I do believe that Connor has a huge following within the United States of America because of the Irish immigrants through hundreds of years that's that's another reason why I think Connor has a lot of support but um, from the actual fight um I, I still can't believe it actually happened. I, I still can't believe. Uh, when the fight was over, I did cry. I cried, like, I really did cry because I was drunk. I was completely drunk. Uh, but uh, I'm so, so proud, so proud of Connor. Uh, Connor's... There's, there's so, there's so much to take. You see, I want to give a lot of credit to Connor because he fought Floyd Mayweather, but it's, it's so difficult not to uh, acknowledge the beautiful skill that Floyd Mayweather has. So, um, there's, of course, lot of ten rounds. So, uh, third minutes in combat environment where you're only using your hands 30 minutes is that's a very long time so in some way you'd say that that does reflect Floyd Mayweather's age it does reflect Floyd Mayweather's skills have slightly diminished okay Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather knocked out Ricky Hatton in 2007 so that was that was uh, 10 years ago. He knocked out Ortiz in 2011, but a lot of people don't count that as a knockout because, of course, Ortiz was talking to the referee and ref- uh, Floyd Mayweather just punched him. But right. Rick, uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky Hatton was knocked out by Floyd in the, in the 10th round, and uh, Conor McGregor wasn't TKO'd he was just exhausted, absolutely exhausted. Uh, there's no other way about that. But um, so I've watched the fight. I don't know about and I, I don't know about anybody else. But I've watched the fight about geez over, over ten times, over over ten times, only because I want to see exactly what Floyd. Uh, what Floyd was doing to Connor, mm. and what I could see, what uh, Floyd <clears throat> Floyd was doing with Connor was trying to gauge and more or less uh, study. It was it was like a reconnaissance. It was nearly like a reconnaissance mission where he wanted to store uh, to see if Connor's power was any like threat and. It was quite shocking that uh, Connor didn't have the authority 
in his punches as what people thought and um, geez it's it's uh it, it's crazy it's crazy but i will I'll, i will say this just really really quickly and, th- and then i'll ask you how you feel but you know exactly how i feel about this fight it feels like uh, a really bad relationship with a girlfriend i'll actually explain i'll actually explain this so this fight was signed six weeks ago so it's nearly like as if you uh, you went on your first date. So the first date was the was the fight being signed. Okay. And then you start to get the you start to get to know the person. So when everybody goes on a date, mm. of course you try to suss out uh, who the other person is. And this is exactly what happened in this uh, Conor McGregor fight. It's nearly like uh, a it's nearly like a relationship because you start to find out about these people and when things don't go the way you thought they the way they thought they did it's exactly like a, it's exactly like a relationship so when a girl does something that you don't expect it makes you reevaluate your entire thought your entire thinking process as the human changes so all that i'm saying and i'm speaking from the bottom of my heart this is hard emotional i was attached to this fight but when that fight was over it felt the exact same as like a breakup of like some sort of relationship now now the reality is is real that it's over this big dream this big illusion and uh, that's that's hard crazy my mind is, Jay. That is hard crazy my mind is. But uh, so how how do you feel how do you feel about this? You know, honestly I like your analogy with the relationship, um, in that I think that's that's kind of true for anything that we look forward to in life. You know, you, you kinda have this this uh, honeymoon stage of oh my gosh, you know I can't believe this is actually happening. I can't believe this is you know this great thing is going down. And then eventually, when it comes to an end, and you know all is said and done, there's kind of a feeling of like huh, hmm, you know. Um, so I think that's an interesting analogy. I, I can see how that might apply. Um, as far as the fight specifically, I loved it, man. Uh, I was really excited for the build up. I thought that the the lead up to the actual fight was was a lot of fun. Uh, the speculation, the all of it was was really really enjoyable. I, I enjoyed it all. Um, the fight itself was, and you know, I mentioned this uh, in the comment section on one of your videos. The fight itself was an excellent study. I think more than anything else, more than the uh, competitive aspect of it more than this person won or that person won I think this was a really really good chance for those of us who partake in combative sports or who just follow combative sports and like to study them this was a really good chance to kind of look at and analyze how differing rule sets affect what is and what isn't effective um, we've had a few recognizable names from the boxing community come over into MMA and try to as pretty close to pure boxers as one can be compete in MMA and with the exception of maybe Ray Mercer not do well at all so we've learned from those experiences that breadth that having uh, a, a wide array of skill sets in, in a environment that allows for a wide array of skill sets is very 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 uh, devastating or damaging what we learned in this particular scenario because we have had a few instances of MMA fighters competing in boxing but they've never really been top level UFC fighters with a current name in their prime and this was very unique in that sense so to have the if not the best 
somebody who is within reason, within the top few uh, MMA fighters at the moment, to have him go and compete in boxing and kind of get schooled in certain aspects of boxing was MMA's uh, uh, James Tony moment. You know, we got to see that depth of skill set, having a focus in one particular skill set and to be very, very, very nuanced in that one particular skill set uh, can also be equally difficult to overcome if you are not accustomed to it. And so from a technical standpoint, I was very pleased with the fight. It was a lot of fun kind of looking at Connor, trying to figure out how to uh, adapt his various skill sets to the ring, and as well as watching Floyd kind of undo that puzzle. It, it, it was a really good fight. I don't think it was super competitive in the sense that like two pro boxers who have been going at it for a long time might be competitive. Um, but it was very interesting, and I think Connor did a lot better than a lot of boxing purists thought he would have done. Uh, yes, Connor was. Connor really uh, did. He really did shock a lot of people because, for a start, Connor's not a boxer, so people thought that Connor isn't. Uh, pe just a lot of people thought that look, this this guy isn't going to try and box Floyd. This guy is not going to try and box Floyd, mm -hmm. and the whole world watched an Irishman try to box a boxer and in some ways he was very successful in scoring points very very successful but in order of stopping authority mm -hmm. Connor I'm sure Connor's very upset with himself because he said in the build up that he's going to stop authority and he's, uh, Floyd's too small he doesn't have a good frame uh, the thing that really shocked me was that Connor uh, Connor tried to box a boxer, and it was crazy. Of, of course, Floyd did change his style within uh, within the fight with uh, trying to box Connor, and then trying to sit on the ropes, and then applied pressure. So that that the Connor is maybe uh, like Floyd being really really smart, but mm -hmm. see the Floyd that is uh, the bread and butter. That is so easy for Floyd to be able to change those tactics from defensive and for me personally, after watching that fight multiple times, I believe we watched the rope it up. We seen Floyd Mayweather sitting on the ropes, allowing Connor to launch all his attacks and for me Connor's attacks were not barbaric. It, uh, Connor needed to be uh, a psycho. Connor needed to come into this fight like an absolute psychopath. He, he, he needed to come into this fight like as if uh, the fight was lost in three rounds or four rounds and complete insanity of attacks. But for me, we've seen a technical Connor, which is definitely the Connor that we all know. Uh, and <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we... We, we, we seen a technical Connor, as we all know, uh, that is in mixed martial arts. He's a very technical fighter. But if you want to be technical in the boxing, exactly what Floyd Mayweather says, you have to be able to give it, but are you willing to take it? And that is the only skill that in boxing you need to acquire before you, do, before you uh, know to work on your hands or your feet. You need to be able to take a good, a good, good shot, and I, th I think Floyd, Floyd Mayweather displayed uh, a huge beacon of light upon the boxing sports because it does show you and show me that it's not a ferocious, insane uh, fighter that wins fights. It's a boxer that uses his mind. It's a boxer that uses his. his he uses his brain over his brawn mm -hmm. and 
it's a fun, it's it's just a fantastic <clears throat> fantastic thing for martial arts because as 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 you said, Jay, we me and you can study that fit and actually look how how can you uh, change your cardio velocity systems to uh, adjust in a twelve round fit and we seen Conor McGregor at his best for I believe Conor was a was at his best shape he could ever be and it showed the whole combat sports that Floyd Mayweather um, at, at, at his game is absolutely tremendous but Conor McGregor I am so so proud so so proud but see when he gets back into the octagon that that is where Conor belongs so um, that's just a fantastic fantastic uh, uh, source of study and investigation and I think that's about it but um, I'm just so 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 proud so so proud but I'm also very ashamed very very ashamed in myself that I actually believed that Connor could actually do this but that's what uh, dreaming that's what dreaming is all about so Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm glad that I went with my choice and uh, yeah I mean look that's a big part of the appeal for this fight is the you know the can he do it aspect you know you have somebody who's never climbed Mount Everest before and then someone says I'm gonna do it and it seems like an impossible task there's an appeal to uh, to guessing or figuring out and rooting for somebody to do something which hasn't been done before and that's been and we, we mentioned this in our last podcast together that's been a big part of Conor McGregor's appeal um, from being a you know a, a guy from Ireland who was on you know social aid uh, to being the highest paid UFC star ever nobody would, would have believed that that would have been a you can't do it moment uh, just joining and getting into the UFC was a you can't do it moment becoming the uh, champion and be, beating Jose Aldo let alone in 13 seconds uh, was a you can't do it moment going up and uh, he was supposed to fight uh, what's his name uh, Rafael Dos Anjos for the belt and that got switched out to Nate Diaz he got beat then when he was coming back to fight him again they said you can't do it he overcame that and then beating Eddie Alvarez to become a two time uh, two belt champion was yet it was you know he's never faced a wrestler like this this is a uh, a bigger guy a more solid guy he can't do it he overcame that um that is part of the appeal of Conor McGregor amongst other things yes there's the flamboyancy, there's the shit talking, there's the fact that he's a very uh, braggadocious and verbose character. Those things are also very appealing as well as the fight as the fact that he can fight. But on top of all of that, there is a personal appeal in the fact that he is somebody who is constantly challenging himself with things that other people have not done yet. And uh, I don't think there's anything unreasonable with rooting for that. Um, one of the things that I think is going to be very interesting is seeing how the skills he's picked up in pure boxing and this time that he spent preparing for this fight, whether or not they will translate back over into the octagon and how so. So, for example, we're not used to seeing Connor jab a lot in the cage. And... He was really utilizing his jab a lot. It was actually very surprising and interesting to see Janner, uh, Janner, to see Connor jab so much. And I'm curious to see whether he brings that back into the into the uh, octagon with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the best jobs in the entire UFC has to be Gegard Mousasi. Mm. That guy, the way he jabs, uh, Gegard Mousasi, he's the one that sticks out in my mind uh, the most that uses his job, uh, I would say Alistair Overeem, but he's not as frequent as mm-hmm. casting his job, unlike 
gig army sausage. So we could see like a gig army sausage there from Connor. Mm. Uh, that that would be a good way for Connor to uh, translate his aggression because a job a, a job is a fantastic way to uh, keep keep your opponent at bay, but also. It's, it's a fantastic weapon to throw and it does not uh, cost a lot of energy because we did see that Connor was throwing his job uh, so much that it was actually making Floyd, I think, smell and stuff. I, th- I actually think Floyd was enjoying Connor's, uh, what Connor was presenting to Floyd. I actually believe that. I believe that Connor uh, and Floyd somehow enjoyed this engagement but yes I really do think that his style of the job will help him in MMA but I don't know about will this job also make it uh, a bit more tricky for someone like Tony Ferguson because if Connor even thinks for one second that he's going to job Tony Ferguson is going to shoot for his legs Mm -hmm. and I, I can see that like the rubber the way the rubbery Tony Ferguson is, that he, he that he could slip down and get the Connor's legs very very easily. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that's that's a, a very good weapon to bring into uh, MMA. But I do think that uh, to use the job like Gag or Musashi would probably be my only way. Not. The way Connor was using the job against Floyd was like scoring points. On like Gegard Musasi uses his job like a Bonington run. He uses his job the way you smash through a castle wall. You, uh, that's what I did not see from Connor. I, I did not see any uh, aggression behind his job. Uh, so I do think that he needs to fix you know a lot of things, but. Uh, that's only for boxing. That's that. That's only for boxing. But uh, I do think Gay or Musasi has an advantage because he's a Dutch, uh, and I do think all Dutch men are designed to kick box. They're all designed to be very technical with kick with the kick with kick boxing. But uh, I think Conor McGregor's biggest issue, Jay, is going to be his cardio. What's your What's your thoughts? So, uh, as far as the fight that happened this past Saturday, um, there was two, maybe three big things that stuck out to me as far as Conor is concerned. Uh, one being the cardio, and that's historically been the case with Conor. Uh, you know, he's been somebody who wins most of his fights in the first round or two. Uh, very seldom does his, do his fights go the distance and when they do he tends to fatigue um what we saw in connor's body language during that last two to three rounds or so was very reminiscent to me of his fights with nick diaz or i'm sorry with nate diaz where you can kind of see the fatigue setting in the hands start dropping and you can feel you can see you can read the fatigue on him and i don't know if that's an issue of his build I don't know if that's an issue of his fighting style, um, but I definitely see that working on, on the cardio is a big thing for him. Uh, another thing, as you mentioned, was his punches really didn't seem to have the oomph and the authority, as you put it, as we've, we're used to seeing them in the octagon. And I suppose, I don't know for sure, but I suppose a lot of that has to do with Connor throwing in a very different way than he's used to. Uh, you're used to seeing Connor leap in from a long distance because, of course, the range is very dis- is very different, and Connor plays a very long, rangy style. And when he sees his openings, he kind of leaps in karate style, like a karate style blitz, and comes in uh-huh. with the momentum of his weight behind that leap in, and comes in with his stuff. And what we saw this time was him standing more in the pocket or attempting to stand in the pocket and box from there. And he didn't have that weight kind of jumping in behind him. Uh, I suspect, although I don't know, that has something to do with why we didn't see as much power coming from Connor. Um, the other thing which really, really stood out to me 
was the lack of comfort at the mid-range. So Connor was very comfortable, it seemed, from out far, right, playing the long game. And once things kind of came into that middle range, you would see him go for the clinch. And in MMA, you don't really see a lot of mid-range fighting. You don't see that kind of up-close boxing and all of that because, of course, there, you know, there's the tie clinch you have to worry about. There are takedowns you have to worry about. And so I think that's where we saw Floyd really start to exploit things was once he saw that Connor was starting to fatigue, didn't really have a lot of threat behind his punches, and didn't seem quite to know what to do in that mid-range other than go for the clinch, um, you saw him start pressuring. Uh, one of the things that McGregor mentioned was that in his preparation, he was doing a lot of sparring with guys using the Philly Shale style defense, and later in the fight, Floyd started, you know, head in forward coming in towards him and he hadn't prepared for that. And I think Floyd read that he wasn't comfortable in that closer area and so started pressuring and really working to get into that mid-range between not quite close enough for clinch, not quite far enough for the long-range game. And I think without the use of the lower body, uh, McGregor was having a very difficult time keeping Floyd at that outside pace uh, or at that outside range. Uh, one of the things I also sound very, found very interesting was you saw a lot of Connor utilizing some of the hand movements and techniques that he uses in the cage that didn't quite translate well. I think they kind of, it took Floyd a minute to figure out how to get around it. But there's the thing that you see a lot of MMA fighters do where they'll kind of put their hands out in front of them and for lack of a better term, kind of patty cake with the other guy's hands. And they're looking, of course, to reach and grab and control the wrist and all of this. And without the dexterity of the fingers and the hands, with only the gloves, uh, Connor wasn't able to do that. And that's something that actually he does quite a bit, where in, from his southpaw stance, he's fighting somebody orthodox, he'll reach out and kind of tap, tap, and then get control of their lead hand kind of forcing them to throw their cross at which point he slips and counters and without the ability to really gain control of that lead hand uh, I think that flustered him a little bit and I think without the ability to uh, threaten with the lower body portion while threatening with kicks he had a difficult time uh, forcing technically forcing Mayweather to open up his guard and expose himself Yeah, uh, that's a fantastic, fantastic observation, Jay. Fantastic. Uh, if, yes, from the from the very beginning of the fight, I knew that Connor is going to be so comfortable at range, mm -hmm. and Floyd is going to be exactly the opposite, where he is not going to be comfortable at range. So, uh, you could see it. You could see moments in the fight where when Floyd got very, very, very close to Connor, mm -hmm. Connor was very, very hastily trying to either spin and pivot around Floyd mm -hmm. or else he was uh, trying to rabbit punch, hammer punch. He was trying to do everything that a referee should say not to do. So mm -hmm. Floyd knew that get Connor in close because Connor isn't accustomed to uh, being so patient mm -hmm. inside the clinch because in MMA as soon as you work inside the clinch it's a different phase of combat mm -hmm. so inside the clinch you're now using uh, your knees, sweeps, getting underhooks, trying to work towards the cage but unlike in the boxing when uh, when you get inside that mid-range and clinch, uh, the work is very... Connor was doing twice as much work as Floyd because Floyd knew... Floyd, Floyd knows that uh, at mid-range and uh, in, clinch, in clinch positions, Floyd 
knows that he has to do less work than Connor because the referee's job is to split is to split a clinch. Unlike in mixed martial arts, when a clinch occurs, it's just another phase of combat. Unlike as soon as a clinch occurs in the boxing ring, the referee's gonna in his mind he he wants to and en- he wants to interact. Unlike in mixed martial arts, that's just another phase of combat. So when Connor was working in say this mid range, exactly what you said, brother, was that Connor was trying to clinch and if you can actually look back at the fight, Floyd was actually doing better work with his arm with his arm control by driving his forearm up into Connor's neck and was actually pushing Connor away and it actually looked for a second that Connor was getting uh, Connor was the one that was being pushed around by a non uh, a non martial artist. So there from the get go you can't see that Connor was not comfortable inside the clinch and inside this mid range and that's where that's where Floyd was way more successful in his accurate shots. Uh, Floyd Mayweather was uh, from my notes here fifty eight percent uh with power shots and out of the fifty eight percent forty six percent was inside uh clinch inside clinch range so that shows uh just how much Floyd was totally aware that well, look when this boy gets inside close range he's not going to be able to fight inside close because he's going to all Connor's programming is to do with just mixed martial arts if if that was inside the cage I think it would have been over maybe maybe round one maybe, maybe three, three, three minutes in maybe three minutes in from that uppercut I think from a four inch glove, from a four inch glove, I don't think Floyd would have, I, th- I think it, I think that would have dropped Floyd, I'm not too sure, but uh, that uppercut in the first round was absolutely beautiful, but I'm only, I'm only speculating here, but uh, it's just, it's just an amazing, an amazing, uh, amazing discussion, but so, I th- I thought uh, I thought that Connor's game plan. What what did you think about Connor's game game plan? Was it a game plan that you expected? Um, I, I'm not sure. So, like, I, I as far as whether or not I expected it, um, I really wasn't quite sure. I don't know if you recall uh, in our last conversation together. One of the things I was talking about, and you were we were actually both saying was that it might be a good idea for Connor to kind of uh, try to play the counter striker and not press so hard for the first round or two uh, and try to draw Floyd out so that it, to being more of the aggressor so that he could counter. Uh, that was kind I was very curious to see if he did that and was kind of hoping that he would uh, just because historically, and I think this is a, a worthwhile point, uh, not to take anything away from McGregor uh, at all, because I think what he accomplished was very impressive. But a lot of people are saying, well, you know, uh, McGregor lasted 10 rounds. He won the first three or four rounds, right? But historically, Mayweather has been somebody who kind of sit back, sits back and, as you said, rope a for the first couple rounds. To let the other guy wear themselves down a little bit. Which you got to remember Floyd has quite often been the smaller man. So I think he has developed his style around being a slow start. Throwing away the first one, two, three, four rounds. So that the other guy can wear themselves down a bit. And he can have time to kind of analyze. Okay, where is their power coming from? What's you know where do, they, where do they like to throw from? Where are they comfortable at? Where are they not comfortable at? And when I saw McGregor go in super hard for like just right away, boom, 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 boom. I was at one hand excited because I wanted to see 
you know, he talked about, you know, I'm going to come and I'm, I'm just too big. He's too small. He's too, his hands are too brittle. He's too frail. And I'm going to break through his guard. I'm going to be punching him in the chest. I'm going to be punching him in the shoulders. I'm going to be punching through his arm. And I'm going to break through his guard. So I was very curious to see if that approach would work. Um, but I, I don't know. I can't say that like I liked it or I didn't like it. Um, I, I really just was interested in seeing how things played out. That was more the perspective that I was coming from was from the perspective of a study. You know, what is he going to do and let's see how that works. And uh, I think what we saw is that, and to your point that you made earlier, as far as a technical uh, cerebral fighter beats the, uh, the voracious or physical fighter in that we saw Mayweather sit back, make his calculations, and then play the long game. Chip away and just, you know, slowly and methodically build himself up in the way of momentum until he was able to start taking over the fight. Um, you also mentioned the some of the things that McGregor was doing in the clinch that a referee would normally intervene in. What was your thoughts with the referee? I, I was very happy with the referee. I think, one, I think the call at the end of the fight was a reasonable call. And I think the referee was also very fair considering the two opponents. I think had Conor McGregor been an established boxer, he would have been a lot harder on the rabbit punches and the, you know taking Floyd's back and then hitting him from behind. But I think considering... Uh, uh, McGregor's background and this being his first pro fight the referee allowed a lot of things to go by that he would not have otherwise gone let go by what, what was your take on that uh -huh. yeah I think that's uh, good a very interesting point a good point that the referee did let a lot uh, go on by but I think that the referee, just at the very beginning of the fight, the referee was just way too focused on Connor. I could feel, uh, I I could really feel bad for Connor. If if I was Connor standing in that ring, I would be forced to say to the referee at that point, for heaven's sake, there's two fighters in this ring. Mm -hmm. Like we are both men here. Like you know, but. I'm just I'm, I'm just speaking on emotions here. I, I just thought that the referee was way too focused and singleized on Conor McGregor for I don't know what reason. Like like did like like did he think that Floyd that Conor was going to dash choke or <laughs> do something like do something right. for Floyd? I didn't. Yeah, that was weird. But yeah, that was very strange. Like like. Why was that? Do you think that there's a conspiracy here that somehow Floyd had like told and demanded the referee to somehow stomp like the rather than concrete? I, I I don't know. What the hell? Yeah, the 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 commentary. You know, I, now look here now. Now I ain't gonna wrestle you and I ain't gonna grapple. That that was a little bit odd, and I don't think that was necessary. Like. That's something that could have been said in the back. That's something that could have been said leading up to the fight. I don't think that was something that was necessary to say in the ring, televised, and to kind of uh, single one fighter out in that way. Um, I'm not sure if that was something that was done just to kind of hype up and, you know, make, exaggerate the this is a MMA fighter versus a boxer situation or whether you know the referee is an old dude he maybe is not you know really knowing like how how capable is this person of sticking just to pure boxing I would assume I don't know but I would assume that the referee probably isn't following MMA very much and I've heard quite a few people say you know well I don't know you know maybe Connor Connor might just you know, panic and, and flying knee, you know, Floyd in the head, or if he's coming in with that type of a mentality, then perhaps that has something to do with the commentary, 
but I did think it was a little bit odd and it definitely whether he was himself biased or not it definitely can paint the picture of him being biased uh, by singling that commentary out to somebody like that mm-hmm. uh, yeah that was very strange so like put like a kind of like a like an allegory or some sort of like like the like the simile of what that felt like it's a bit like when your mother when your mother was like leaving to go out shopping and you're with your brothers and your sisters and your mother just comes up to you and says don't touch the cookies don't touch the crisps don't touch the lemonade don't touch the chocolate it's like mommy i have other brothers and sisters like there's there's other brothers and sisters here who are also going to be in uh, and also threat of taking these things. So why are you just talking to me? So it so it kind of felt like uh, it kind of felt like the mum telling the child. That's what I could see from the referee, uh, like being like way too focused on Connor. But as far as the fake goes, the referee was. I don't feel that he was confident. I seriously don't feel. I didn't see a confidence in his presence I, I, I didn't see a referee in that fight I seen a man with a tuxedo on who is very aware of boxing and doesn't have one single clue about mixed martial arts and if anything that was a great great shame a great shame for Connor because Connor was obviously going to be going in that fight very very nervous and that referee from the get go from step one was very focused on Connor, and I feel for me, I that that would put me off. That would that, that would put me off from the very start. I, I I would because I'm I'm all about conspiracies and stuff. So I would think straight away that referee has been instructed to be this forward, you know. But uh, as as far as the stoppage goes, I think the referee made. An excellent stoppage. He saved Connor. He really did save Connor, and that's probably the best thing the referee done. Yeah, I agree. I think um, a lot of people, Connor included, and I certainly understand where the sentiment comes from. But a lot of people I've heard say, "Well, like, look, man, Connor wasn't like physically damaged. He wasn't physically hurt. You know, Connor is a tough guy. He comes from a sport." that allows for a lot more damage to occur uh, standing up before a fight is stopped. I mean, if you go back and you look at the Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos, or you go back and look at, you know, Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot, or you go back and you look at uh, Jim Miller versus Joe Lozon, you go back and you look at some of these fights and the amount of damage that fighters are allowed to receive as long as they're in the standing arena or in the standing uh, aspect of things is way, 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 way more than what McGregor went through in this fight. But I think we have to compare apples to apples here. And by boxing standards, although McGregor was not particularly damaged, uh, his hands, he was keeping his hands low. He was, you know... Using a very, again, I think this is just from not being accustomed to fighting uh, within that closer middle range. You would watch him on his defense. He's used to being just out of arm's reach and then kind of jumping back a little bit and pulling away. And that being having enough space to uh, clear him. And so you would see him kind of do that a little bit and then start getting caught. And his his defense, the hands low defense... The being fatigued, I think his being fatigued, you know, allowed him to be kind of knocked around when he, when he would get hit. He would stumble backwards into the ropes and he wasn't firing back. And I think that's the primary thing. If in all of this McGregor had been firing back and landing with shots that had some like threat and, and damage to them, I believe that the ref would have allowed it to go further because he would have been showing that he's still in the fight. But for the referee's position, 
here you have somebody who is fighting arguably the current best professional boxer out there who has zero record and he's getting hit and not countering and not defending. And now you're against the rope and you're, you know, taking shots and it looks like, and this could have very well just been fatigued, but it looks like now the everything is starting to accumulate. I think it was the responsible thing given the expectation of boxing as to what is and isn't acceptable damage and acceptable uh, damage without response. I think the, the, the referee made a good call. Um, I think it was a wise decision and I can't be mad at it. Yes, could Connor have physically taken more damage and been okay? Yeah, I believe so. Might he possibly have re had a second win in this last two rounds like he did in the uh, Nick Diaz 2 fight? It or Nate, I keep saying Nick, Nate Diaz 2 fight? Yes, that is a possibility. But one, I'm sure the referee is not aware of those fights. And two, again, we have to compare them by boxing standards because they're having a boxing match. And by boxing standards, I do believe that that was a reasonable and justified call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, it was a great, great stoppage. And the the only reason why I do feel that it was a good stoppage compared to as what people, uh, as our viewers and subscribers would obviously observe that the damage that is. Uh, sustained in MMA and the UFC is much, much greater than in the boxing. But uh, the way the damage, you can work your way out of damage in the UFC. Of course, we've seen Darren Elkins and what was his name? Backtick. Uh, Darn, we've seen Darren Elkins versus Backtick. That was about. Uh, about two, two, three, three months ago, and I'm, I'm not too sure on the time scale, but we've seen Aaron Elkins get his face smashed in for two straight rounds, and then in the third round, we seen Aaron Elkins come back with a flurry of attacks up against the cage, and then finish it off with a head kick. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that in mixed martial arts, when you're when when you're acquiring a lot of damage. Just like as you seen in the first Nate fight, when Connor was really taking that, the, uh, when he was taking damage, he could shoot for Nate's legs. Mm -hmm. uh, in mixed martial arts, when you're like, let's say, when you're getting ground and pound, you can buck, you can, you know, you can do many things to show the referee that you that that you're there. There's many things that you can do in mixed martial arts to display to the referee that you're in the fight, you know, like clinching up, getting under hooks, trying to sweep, trying to pivot, uh, trying to do anything. On like, this is the difference in the boxing. When you're tired and you're hurt, and if you do not throw one punch back, that is a body language to a referee saying that you do not have the energy and the will to mm -hmm. exchange back. Of course, there are fighters who uh, their style is to be defensive, but the rep, uh, the referee knows Robert Bird is totally aware of what it takes to get knocked out, and he, I think, he could see that Connor was so tired that uh, that the referee saved the the referee really saved Connor from a lot of trouble, but. It was through tiredness, not damage, and I must, I must, I must, I must admit that that Connor, he was really damaged from the shots because he was tired. But if he had maintained his cardio, maybe the shots wouldn't have been as effective. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's such a great thing to talk about, Jay. The reason why that fight could be stopped. In a boxing fight, and the reason why it will not be stopped in an MMA fight, it's actually amazing to show the difference in sports. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's actually amazing because in mixed martial arts, you can come out, you can come out of hell 
through many, many, many different things, <laughs> through many different ways. And like in boxing, you're only coming out of hell by your punches, <laughs> by your hands. So this is why I love mixed martial arts because there's many, 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 many ways that you can claim out of hell. <laughs> and that's just how I feel. I think I think you hit it right on the head, man. Um, the the ability to have so many options makes it much more likely that somebody can have a comeback. Like if I'm in the octagon and I'm just getting boxed up, and I clearly am, am of no match with this person as far as my boxing goes. Yes, I can. I can. You know try to work my way into the clinch and maybe pull guard and work on my jujitsu if I feel I'm stronger there. Or maybe I can keep things at a kicking range if I feel I'm stronger there. Or maybe I can try to find a way to, you know, wrestle the person down and just work work from the top. Even if I'm not really ground and pounding them out, just keeping top position and kind of grinding him and pressuring him and trying to wear him down with, you know, just small punches, pray, uh, lay and pray style, you know, George St. Pierre style. Uh, all of those things are, are available to you if the person is too strong for you in one particular area. But when you're in a pure style, whether it's jiu-jitsu, whether it's wrestling, whether it's Muay Thai, whether it's boxing, once you see that this person has your number in that one thing, there is nothing else to resort to. You're just outclassing that one thing and then that's it. Um, what I, I very much look forward to this uh, you're now, and again, we, we spoke about this last time we talked, uh, for all of the shit talking that people do for Conor McGregor's stunts and doing certain things, a whole lot of people follow in his footsteps. So a lot of people were talking shit about him being a two belt champion. He's not defending his belts. He's got one belt and now he's trying to get another one. But he becomes two belt champion and we've heard at least half a dozen other people now talking about wanting to be a two belt champion. Uh, people were talking so much shit about him going to fight outside of MMA. And now that he's done it, uh, there's some talk of Bisping having a two way fight where I, I forget the guy's name, Baloo or Below or Bello, uh, some British dude. But the. the it's my Tommy. It's actually Tommy Bellew. Tommy oh. Bellew. Tommy Bellew, okay, that cat is talking about having a two-way fight, so Bisping come compete against him in boxing, and then him come compete, compete against Bisping in MMA, because apparently he has some wrestling background and stuff like that. Uh, Andre Berto. What about the possibility of Stipe Miocic versus Anthony Joshua also? I would love to see that. Um, Dana doesn't sound too happy about it, but I would love to see it. What's that? I I think Steve Miocic would wreck him. Is that right? I yeah, honestly I, just I don't think Steve Miocic would be. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm just saying that because he's a farmer, you know. Okay. Okay. I I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not familiar enough with Joshua to have any kind of uh any kind of answer or expectation based on anything so i would have to just kind of take your word on that one um but i would have loved to seen it and andre berto just announced that he wants to try to make his way into the ufc apparently he has a bunch of fighters in his family his father uh was in the early ufcs i believe he has a, a sister who was like a tuf alum uh there's another brother of his who's competing something in MMA. And so he has quite a few family members who have competed in MMA. And he's talking about now trying to come and get into the UFC and to be the first person to hold a championship belt in boxing and a championship belt within the UFC, which I think would be amazing. So I think this has opened up a, 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 a much more accepted willingness to cross competing amongst the striking sports, Sanchai just uh, called out McGregor. He, he's training at uh, at TriStar. He said he wants to compete against McGregor in an MMA match. And so I think what we're going to see from this, if that does happen and that becomes a trend, I think we're going to see the quality of striking within MMA take a big leap. 
I think we're going to see a huge, huge leap in the advancement of striking in MMA, largely due to this fight. Now that it is the appeal of this fight and the fact that these cross uh, promotions can be so lucrative has been exposed. I do believe we're going to see a, a better, a, a a better display and development of striking within MMA. Yeah, Jay, man, I'm actually excited, man. That's actually like that feels like Christmas has come early because <laughs> I did not think at all about these implications of uh, mixed martial arts and the UFC stepping up in their striking. So. I'm actually very, very excited for this up and coming, like, geez, years and years in the future of this beautiful striking arts being available to mixed martial arts. Fantastic. Yeah, man. You know, uh, I, I remember I said this, I think, last year, and it hasn't quite taken fruition yet, but I think give it a couple of years, it will. Uh, MMA as far as competing MMA was was uh, legalized recently, if I'm not mistaken, in Thailand. It was illegal for a while to compete in, in MMA because they didn't want it to be a threat to the native style of uh, Muay Thai. Uh, but I think with that being more commonplace, you're going to see a lot more high-level Muay Thai fighters, championship-level Muay Thai fighters coming over to the UFC and bringing a much more developed uh, style of Muay Thai. And now with this event having occurred, I think we're going to see a much more developed style of boxing coming into uh, the UFC. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, where this is going to go. I'm excited to see how this is going to develop for not only for MMA, but for the other sports as well. And, uh, you know, look, man, win, lose or draw, both of these men have made fighting history along with, you know, a nice couple million dollars you know uh, a few hundred million dollars at that so this has been a wonderful event man I, I was really really excited for it I enjoyed it thoroughly and I, I think this is going to uh, surprisingly to a lot of people who have clowned it and kind of uh, diminished it as being just some poo poo thing some silly thing that was being done I think this will actually end up being an, an advancement for both sports Yes, man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, very, very well said. And I also like to say the same to you also, that thank you for this uh, mega, mega, mega trip on supporting Connor and also supporting boxing because without without boxing, there was no Connor, and without Connor, there was no Floyd. So uh, this was amazing amazing journey and thank you very much for the experience Jay. man thank you as well i i enjoyed uh being able to be blah 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 blah, blah. my mouth is is it's just dying out on me i enjoyed being able to analyze uh this event with you and to kind of get a perspective because of course you you know you compete uh at a level within boxing, I don't. I am certainly much more naive and uh, ignorant to certain aspects of boxing than you are. So to be able to kind of converse with you and get your take on things and kind of hear you break certain things down has been very enjoyable and very helpful for me. So I definitely have enjoyed this, man. And let's you know, let's keep it going. Every so often, you know, let's uh, let's connect and just do an episode, man. Yeah, brother, I really want to make this a frequent. Uh, a frequent thing. Yeah, for sure, dude. For sure, dude. Well, look, man, we're uh, coming up on an hour. We're exactly like 59 minutes and 50 seconds. So, uh, let's wrap this up, brother. Do you have any parting words that you want to say? Uh, just, I'd uh, like to thank everybody that supported Connor. I'd like to thank everybody that supported Floyd because this fate was nothing without the fans and no matter who you pick and fights, it's all about sportsmanship and respecting your enemy and also respecting yourself. That is one of the biggest things to take from every single uh, 
competitive sport that you also have to respect yourself and Connor should be proud of himself and everybody should be proud of themselves for 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 supporting and I'd just like to say thank you also Jay yeah man absolutely thank you as well you're welcome thank you um, everybody who's listening I hope you've enjoyed please leave a comment in the comment section let us know what you thought of the fight Please go to my man's uh, YouTube channel, Irish Technical Thinker. Give him a like, subscribe, leave a nice comment, do something to support the brother. He's good people. He's got a good channel. And uh, peace out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. Man, All right. I love you, man. You're awesome. You're All right, awesome, man. man. Holla at you, brother. Okay. Peace and love, man. Peace and love, brother.